Hi friend, thank you so much for being here. It is a joy and a privilege to study with you and to prepare our hearts for Christmas, right? To prepare our hearts to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so I'm I'm pleased to be with you with you today and just kind of wrap up our fourth week which is the love candle like if i had my advent wreath which is actually downstairs on my dining room table uh we would be yeah we would be lighting that fourth candle the love candle so we've had hope peace joy and now love what is it that we learn about god's love this week well, i think clearly we saw that jesus is born Emmanuel, God with us, God with us. And so we see the love of God and how he has sent his one and only son on our behalf, not to condemn us, but to forgive us, to save us from our sins. So a lot of good news. Uh, God's love is all over the story of Jesus's birth. So how did I summarize? I, you know, I've reviewed the day five questions today and I'm hopping on just to talk about what I've seen. You know, I think it's always important to summarize. And here's what I said, that Matthew tells the birth of Jesus Christ from a little bit different perspective than what Luke did. And I love it. I love getting, you know, more details, just uh, looking at the birth from a different angle, from a different perspective. Like we get to see the birth of Jesus Christ a little bit more from Joseph's perspective. We get to see it from the perspective of the wise men, even Herod's perspective. And I think most importantly this week, or what really jumped out to me, is we get this perspective of how Jesus, the birth of Jesus Christ, fulfills the word of the prophets, fulfills the word of God as spoken, through the prophets many, many years ago. And that speaks to question nine in these day five questions, lists the prophecies fulfilled in this chapter. And I think it's amazing that we see not just one prophet, but we see a variety of prophets uh, whose word was fulfilled. Just in the uh, short passage that we studied this week. We've seen uh, prophecies of Isaiah, Micah, Hosea, and Jeremiah all become fulfilled through the birth of Jesus Christ. So that's pretty exciting. And not only that, but we see the word of God being fulfilled through these dreams of Joseph and the dreams of the wise men. And it wasn't like just any old dreams. Like these were dreams where uh, God was speaking to them. God was giving warning or God was giving instruction on what to do through his angel or, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure how dreams like that work, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Prophecy being pro uh, fulfilled. When God speaks, it is so. <laughs> I love that. So what do we learn about God through the fulfillment of these prophecies? I think we learn exactly that when God speaks. It is so. That goes back to his Old Testament name of Yahweh when he says, let it be. It is so. Uh, we can go back to Genesis chapter 1 when he is creating. Let there be light and there is light. When God says, when God speaks uh, his word, it will be. He is faithful to it. He is faithful to his promises. He's faithful to his covenant. And in all of that, there's this idea of his sovereignty, that he reigns sovereign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, God Most High. And I think another idea that came out this week is that God's word will be fulfilled despite us. I think we clearly see that through Herod. Herod is one who in in this week's passage we see he does he chooses not to humble himself, right? Uh, Herod chooses the way of pride and he will refuse to bow down and he, in fact he chooses wickedness. But God's word will be fulfilled even despite Herod's wickedness. So maybe unpack that here just a little bit, um, a, a, a little bit more as, 
as I talk about really that the biggest thing that I'm praising God for this week, yeah, it it has to do with this fulfillment of prophecy, which I think speaks to God's intentions, to his faithfulness, to his steadfast love. When I think of faithfulness, I think of God's steadfast love, that love candle. He will he will not change his mind. He will be faithful despite our un faithfulness as we see uh, with Herod. Uh, he stays true to his promise despite any opposition. Um, so praising God, question number 12, you know, I like to look at, at the scripture. What do I learn about who Jesus is? What do I learn about who God is? I mean, clearly Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Uh, God, he is God with us. He is Emmanuel. So I learn about God's faithfulness, his grace, his mercy uh, to us, to ordinary people who really don't have a clue as to what they're doing. You know, I think we kind of see that with Joseph. But I so Friends, as I kind of unpacked this idea of God with us, it took me back to, uh, yeah, it just it it just took me back over the course of the whole study, and all the different people that we've talked about. Like just right now, we've talked about the prophets. God was with the prophets. God gave them His word to speak. God gave them a word of hope and peace and joy and love that they would speak it and it would be fulfilled hundreds of years into the future. God was with them. We see his steadfast uh, grace and mercy and love on the prophets. We see that we've seen that God was with Zechariah and Elizabeth. Here was an ordinary Jewish priest going about his ordinary kind of ordinary life, doing his duty, doing his temple duties and doing them faithfully. We saw that he and Elizabeth were righteous in the eyes of the Lord, yet they remained barren. They remained empty. And, and, and we talked about this idea. Zechariah was almost hopeless, right? He couldn't quite believe the word of the angel, the word of the Lord is spoken to him. But God was with Zechariah. He was with Elizabeth. He was steadfast in his faithfulness and his love and his grace and his mercy to them. We've seen God be, uh, God be with Mary, right? He has been Emmanuel with Mary, this ordinary Jewish girl who herself declared, look, I'm, I'm unimportant. Who would take notice of me? But yet in her very ordinary existence, this small town Galilean girl, God is with her. And he opens up her womb. He opens up her heart that she might believe in the one who he conceives within her. And she puts her hope in God's word. She puts her hope in this son that will be born to her. Uh, she puts her hope into this good news of hope and peace and joy and love. We have seen that God is with the shepherds. Again, these were very ordinary men just out doing their very ordinary jobs. These were kind of the least of the least, unimportant uh, in the hills of, of, of Judea, right? Just doing their work. Yet God was with them. His grace, his steadfast love was with them. Uh, they get to hear this good news of great joy. God was with Simeon and Anna, uh, these devoted elderly people at the, at, you know, who are nearing the end of their earthly existence. And, but they, they were so faithful. They were so devoted. They were on the lookout for this one who would be born as the Messiah. God was with them and brings them the good news. Uh, this week, we have seen that God was with Joseph. I've spent quite a bit of time pondering Joseph this week. Again, here's a very ordinary Jewish man, a small town kind of living in Galilee, probably a carpenter, don't you think? Because Jesus learns carpentry, which he most likely would have learned from his father. Here's just a 
hardworking, ordinary man. Uh, Matthew declares him just that he was righteous. And we see, we learn from his actions that he's humble. He, um, you know, here Mary shows up pregnant. Uh, he could have been prideful. He could have been hurt. And I'm, I'm sure there is hurt. He didn't know what to do when the angel of the Lord uh, is, is, is sent to him to speak God's word to him. He does not know what to do, just like most of us. I know, at least for myself, I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. This was Joseph, a small town kind of guy doing his ordinary day-to-day -day work, hoping to get married, uh, not knowing what in the world he is doing. But God is with him, and God is with him. God clearly gives him instructions why? So that he can do his work well, so that he can do his role well. And we might ask, what work, what role did God give Joseph? Boy, he had this important role of protecting Mary and protecting this baby boy, the one who is born King of the Jews. So I love seeing how, how uh, Joseph or God is with Joseph and Joseph trusts. Joseph does everything just as God uh, tells him to do. And it's interesting to me that we see from Matthew's perspective that it is Joseph who names Jesus, Jesus. It is Joseph who takes Jesus and Mary from here to there and back from there to here. Uh, Joseph is doing his role of protecting. I I love it. God God is with Joseph, this carpenter. Um, this week we also got to see that uh, God is with the uh, wise men in the east. I mean, it's incredible. God gives of his wisdom. God gives them this beautiful sign that will declare his glory in the heavens. He gives them wisdom to understand that this star points to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and they have open hearts to go search for him. Those open hearts, that's God's grace. That's his steadfast love to them. God was with them. He travels with them. He takes them to Jerusalem. He takes them on to Bethlehem uh, that they might rejoice with exceeding joy, that they might have opportunity to humble themselves, to bow down before this King of Kings, that they have this opportunity to offer, to like open up their treasure box and open these or present these gifts, offer these gifts to the king of kings and these were gifts fit for a king this is beautiful god was with them we see god's grace his mercy his steadfast love to the wise men from the east and friends i would even argue i know this is a little bit different but i would even present this that god was with herod God was with all the people of Jerusalem. God gave Herod. God gave all of those in Jerusalem who were troubled, who were distressed by this news that the king of the Jews had been born. He gave them the opportunity to know this king of the Jews. He gave them the opportunity to hear of the good news. But in Herod's case, we see him choose not to worship the king of the Jews. We see him choose to worship himself. We see his pride. We see the evil intent that is in his heart, and he instead chooses wickedness. All right, so we see this idea that God is with us. He is with us all. He gives us all this opportunity to hear the good news and to believe in the good news. What's the good news? It's the hope and peace and joy and steadfast love of God as shown through his son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, the one who came to save and to save, save us from our sins. <laughs> All right, um, friends, I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm 
preaching a sermon here. God is with us. Oh, friends, I hope that in the midst of our ordinary day-to-day -day lives, I've told you I consider myself a small-town girl, ordinary. Uh, you know, I live in the United States. The president of the United States would have no idea who I am. I am just, you know, kind of like Mary. I would say I am unimportant, just going about my ordinary day-to-day -day life. But friends, in our ordinary, as we prepare to celebrate Christmas, and it might look very ordinary. It might look like we're doing the same thing that we do year after year after year, setting up our Christmas tree trees, preparing the same Christmas cookies, uh, just doing the same traditions that we always do or we look forward to doing. Uh, as, as we do the ordinary, and I sure am hoping that I get to do that, hoping everyone stays healthy and that we're able to gather and celebrate in the ordinaries, ordinary ways that we do, but celebrate the extraordinary idea that God is with us, that God loves us so much that he would send his one and only son on our behalf. He's gracious. He is merciful. He is steadfast in his love. When he speaks, it is so. Friends, he loves us. He values us. Oh, may we celebrate that this Christmas. Mm -hmm.